In medical training, they stress with you. It's about lifelong learning. And when they say that, sometimes you don't quite understand what they mean. Oh, lifelong learning. Okay, I'll be learning for forever. And we just hear it and we don't really internalize it and really take time to understand what that means. What it means is that for you guys, at every single step of your medical journey, there is constantly opportunities to learn more. You will never be done learning. You will never be able to learn everything and know everything. And so you must be in learner mode and student mode at all times to flourish, to thrive at all levels, personally. Guys, one of the hardest things in, in transitioning to medical school is that for so many of you guys as pre-meds, you've been the A student. You've been able to learn everything for your exams. Then you transition to medical school and you recognize, man, medicine is deep. There's a lot of stuff here. I can't possibly learn everything by test date. And so it gets very frustrating for students. They feel very frustrated. Oh my gosh, I'm not getting my, and then they transition to the clinics. Oh my gosh, I'm not doing my clinics right. Like we have these early patient experiences, but I don't know what I'm doing. I'm floundering. And they set these bar crazy high for themselves. And instead, what I want you guys to do is recognize that's what it's all about. It's there. You're there literally to learn constantly. They put you in these awkward predicaments so that way you can feel awkward, recognize this is rock bottom. It only gets better from here. And you can learn and you can grow. But if we have this unrealistic expectation for ourselves, if we have this whole thing, oh, I should know everything, know it all, it leads you to feel angry, to feel upset, to feel disheartened, to feel less than. And that's what happened was a student was trying to act like a know-it-all with me. And I'm like, you can't know everything I know because I'm a seasoned anesthesiologist. You're here on rotation trying to learn about anesthesia. So what good does it help you to try to seem like a know-it-all when I can see right through you? You can't be the expert I am. You're here to learn from me. So they were literally, they would ask me something or something would happen. I'm like, hey, listen, this is a good point. And I would try to teach them and while I'm speaking, they start speaking. I'm like, you know what? In airway management, it's really important. Oh, yeah, because we get the airway open. I'm like, sure, I like the excitement, but can I finish my point? <laughs> I'm like, yes, we have to keep the airway open. That's step one, but how do we do that? And so for you guys, that's what we want to avoid. It's not about showing how smart you are. As someone who went through the whole ranks, everyone always was impressed with me on medical rotations. When I shadowed people even before that long, before, even as a high school student, when I shadowed, they were impressed with me. And it had nothing to do with everything I knew. It had everything to do with my eagerness, my willingness to learn and soak up all the good information to make them feel like know-it-alls and make me feel like a learn it all And they say they, they've done studies on this. Some of the best, they say, conversationalists. It has nothing to do with what they say. It has everything to do with how they listen. Because we as people like to feel listened to. And as an educator, as a senior anesthesiologist, if I have a medical student rotating with me, if I have a, a pre-med shadowing me, I want them to recognize they don't know more than me. I want them to show the deference to be like Dr. Pine said, teach me all the good stuff. I want to learn all this. This is amazing. I'm so excited to teach me it all. I don't want them to try to show me what they know. And it's important, guys. So again, at a psychological level to make it a much more enjoyable experience. Then you recognize, hey, I can't look dumb enough. I'm here to learn. Let's go. Let's look dumb and let's do things. Let's challenge ourselves. Let's try an IV. Let's try an airway. Even if it goes terribly, I'm here to learn. I don't put that pressure on myself. Professionally, you'll do better because you will step out. And so this medical student, for example, I mentioned how they were already trying to interrupt me and seem like a know-it-all, but they also, every time I say, hey, listen, you want to try this procedure? Hey, blah, blah. I'm trying to teach them something. They kept shying away. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't and they were doing it because they didn't know how to do it and they didn't want to look dumb. And what they, again, failed to recognize is, I know you don't know how to do this. I know you've never done it anywhere. I know you've never done an IV. You're here to learn these experiences. Otherwise, why come? Why have a clinical rotation if you are perfect and you know the procedures already? And so instead, the juxtaposition of that is I've had pre-med students come and I've shown them how to do techniques and they're like, oh, wow, blah, blah, blah. And they've picked up things because they were open to it. Same thing with other, other medical students. That's what it's about, guys. You can learn a ton, but you can't learn anything if your mouth is moving. You can't learn anything if you close your eyes and run away from everything because you're too scared to mess it up. You're there under my supervision to learn, to mess up, to make mistakes. So I can tell you, ooh, don't do that. They'll bleed out, bleed out the patient so you can make the adjustment and be more successful. Does that make sense to everybody what I'm saying right now? <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, I don't want to do an IV. I'm scared. Don't be scared. Take that fear out your heart, that need to get it right and just say, you know what? I'm going to stick this needle in there and I may or may not get blood. I may or may not strike oil, but either way, this is one more miss that gets me closer to getting the IV correct. And as someone who's done literally... I can't even I can't even count guys, but I've done so many IVs. It's like second nature for me to throw IVs. 
Now when I train medical students or residents, I look back and I'm like, I see, watch them struggle. And I just laugh inside because I'm like, I can remember when I was there, but now I can't miss, baby. I'm on it. And it's all through all those reps. It took all the misses, all the frustrations, <laughs> all the mishaps for me to now be like this amazing anesthesiologist who gets the job done with my procedures. Does everybody understand? So if you want to be a great clinician, you're trying to step up to that. So we can't be the know-it-all. We have to be the learn-it-all. And that's the approach. That's the philosophy we want to have going into clinical experiences because it makes it amazing for everyone. That's literally the only criteria I have for my evaluations. When I'm evaluating pre-meds because they're going to ask me for a letter of recommendation or I'm evaluating medical students because they're going to want a letter of recommendation for their residency or I'm evaluating residents to see if they promote, I'm always just looking for someone who recognizes and understands that they don't know everything. They know the limits of their knowledge. They're willing to accept the challenge and try things. And they're willing to say, hey, I don't know this. Help me more and ask for assistance when they need it. And if you can do that and you got a good attitude about that whole spectrum of learning, you're going to get a, an A recommendation from me. But if you've got a funky attitude every time I give you some feedback or some instruction, that's going to be a problem.